Compulsive behaviors. An addiction is a state of being enslaved to a habit or practice. Something that is psychologically or physically habit-forming, such as alcohol or narcotics to the extent of its cessation causes severe trauma. Compulsive is governed by an obsessive need to conform, be scrupulous, etc., coupled with an inability to express positive emotions. It is a character that pertains to compulsion. Obsessiveness causes an obsession. Someone who obsesses or obsesses behaves obsessively and the person excessively or extremely does so. Compulsive behavior is performing an act persistently and repetitively without it necessarily leading to an actual pleasure or reward. Compulsive behaviors are viewed as a need to reduce anticipation caused by internal feelings. Of which the person be wanting to abstain from or control things perceived as adversity, misfortune, suspicion, or fear of future evil or trouble. Whether this is an idea, opinion, or view on a subject. Compulsive behaviors can be extremely biting nails or skin to the point of obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, these are self-mutilating behaviors. Also, compulsive behaviors include excessively, checking things, counting, gambling, hoarding, occurrence, overeating, repeating, sex, shopping, stealing, talking, trichotillomania, washing, etc. Addiction is a compulsion toward a rewarding stimulus. An addiction could be linked to beliefs, concepts, customs, and practices of a person's upbringing. Compulsive behavior is the core feature of compulsive disorder, OCD. Compulsive behaviors could be linked to forgetfulness or neglectfulness. The act isn't disturbing pathologically when it is a repetitive small restricted behavior. Compulsive behaviors. Checking, repeatedly checking appliances, door locks, or light switches, for possible danger or harm. Counting, repeatedly counting specific numbers of importance relating to a situation, and when the number is considered significant the person performs more duties. Eating, repeatedly overeating foods low in nutrition is the inability to control the amount of nutritional intake, resulting in excessive weight gain. Overeating generally becomes a coping mechanism for dealing with stress. This behavior usually develops in early childhood, the feelings are accompanied by guilt and shame of using food to avoid emotional stress. Other issues can be binge eating, depression, and withdrawal. Gambling, repeatedly gambling assets or money away, and not resisting the desire to gamble. Of which can lead to personal and social issues for an individual. This behavior begins early adolescence for men and women between the ages of 20 to 40. Other issues can be feuds with family members, others, the law, and avoiding stressful times. Two major issues revolve around a lack of money to keep gambling or paying off debt. Hoarding, repeatedly saving possessions believing those items will be useful in the future or have sentimental value. Other reasons can be afraid of losing documents, information, and object characteristics. Usually, the items that are saved include books, clothes, containers, craft items, junk mail, and newspapers. Other issues can be blocked exits that can pose danger to family and friends. Occurrence, repeatedly dismissing or ignoring accusations of having obsessive compulsive disorder. Researchers say there are about 50 million people are suffering from some type of OCD. Suffers appear more secretive than other people with psychological problems, and may endure the condition for years before seeking help. Sex, repeatedly behaving and thinking about sex-related desires including feelings that are considered illegal and slash or culturally and morally unacceptable. This disorder is also known as hypersexual disorder, hypersexuality, nymphomania, or sexual addiction. Shopping, repeatedly buying and shopping believing that you ought to be a trendsetter or the first to purchase new products. Other issues can be that shopping causes impairment in a person's life with family or finances. Approximately 80% of women suffer from this type of behavior than men worldwide. Yet still, there is no proven treatment for this type of compulsive behavior. Stealing, repeatedly stealing things believing you are to achieve success by any means necessary. Of which can lead to identity, personal and social issues. Other issues are bad reputation, run-ins with law enforcement, incarceration, or even the death penalty due to an innocent bystander. Talking, repeatedly beyond the bounds of what is considered to be a socially acceptable amount of talking. Not leaving space for the other person to give details, feedback, or an opinion. Talking about things that don't have a significant meaning or well-thought-out plan. Other issues those actions can lead to personal and social forms of confrontation or even obstruction with law enforcement etc. Personality traits that have been positively linked to this compulsion include the ability to communicate, assertiveness, self-perceived communication competence, and neuroticism. Trichotillomania, repeatedly picking hair or skin of the body, which results in bald spots. Other issues may be digging, rubbing, or scratching the skin, which is to rid blemishes of the skin. All compulsions can leave abrasions and irritation on the skin and can lead to an infection. These acts usually occur in times of high anxiety, boredom, or stress. Washing, repeatedly washing things for fear of contamination, such as clothes, body, dishes, hands, etc., throughout the day. Either can be perceived as a part of a ritual that follows a pattern. 
external and internal stimuli. Human senses include hearing, smell, vision, taste, touch, and several others. A stimulus, plural stimuli, is something that incites action, exertion, or quickens action, feeling, thought, etc. In psychology, a stimulus is something that excites an organism or part of functional activity. A detectable change in the external or internal environment. When an organ or organism responds to eternal stimuli it is called sensitivity. A stimulus applied to a sensory receptor elicits or influences a reflex via stimulus transduction. Sensory receptors receive information, signals, from inside the body, as well as from outside the body. Senses or sensors detect energy from the world and convert the energy into signals. The signal from a sensor may be high, very complex, or low, simple, frequencies. The organism processes or interprets the signal from the sensor, as ignorable, positive or negative. Positive signals mean the person is either attracted to the stimulus or wants more. Negative signals mean the person wants to avoid the stimulus. Signals may be processed near the sensor, in the brain, or somewhere in between during any given situation. Homeostatic imbalance forces a change of the body, and the receptors and sensors monitor different parts of the body. The first component of a homeostatic control system is often an internal stimulus. Chemoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and thermoreceptors sensors respond to chemical or temperature change, and pressure or stretching. Mechanoreceptors such as baroreceptors detect a change in blood pressure, Merkel's discs detect pressure and tufts that are sustained, and hair cells detect sound stimuli. Homeostatic imbalances can serve as internal stimuli are nutrient and ion levels in the blood and oxygen and water levels. Deviations from the homeostatic ideal can generate homeostatic emotions such as fatigue, pain, or thirst. Motivated behavior then restores the body to stasis such as drinking, resting, or withdrawal. External stimuli can produce systemic responses throughout the body, it is called the fight-or-flight response. A stimulus detects a high probability when its level exceeds the absolute threshold. If a signal does reach, the information is transmitted to the central nervous system, CNS. Then it is integrated to decide on how to react. The CNS determines whether a signal causes a reaction or not, and commonly stimuli cause the body to respond. Senses Smell, the olfactory organs consist of epithelium and lamina propria, they are located on both sides of the nasal septum. The olfactory epithelium contains cell receptors that cover the interior surface of the cribriform plate, the perpendicular plate, or the nasal concha. Roughly 2% of airborne compounds inhaled are carried to olfactory organs as the air being inhaled. The olfactory receptors that extend past the epithelial surface provide a base for many cilia lying in the mucus. Odorant binding proteins interact with the cilia stimulating receptors. The absolute threshold for smell is the minimum amount needed to elicit a response from receptors in the nose. Sound, changes in pressure caused by sound reaching the external ear resonate in the tympanic membrane, articulates with the auditory ossicles or bones of the middle ear. The tiny bones multiply pressure fluctuations as they pass disturbance into the cochlea, a spiral-shaped bony structure within the inner ear. Hair cells in the cochlear duct, specifically the organ of corti, are deflected as waves of fluid and membrane motion travel through chambers of the cochlea. Bipolar sensory neurons located center of the cochlea monitor information from cell receptors and pass it on to the brainstem via the cochlear branch of cranial nerve 8. Sound information is processed in the temporal lobe of the CNS, specifically in the primary auditory cortex. The absolute threshold for sound is the minimum needed to elicit a response from ear receptors. Taste, gustatory cells are located on the surface of the tongue and adjacent portions of the pharynx and larynx. The gustatory cells form on taste buds and specialized epithelial cells are turned over every 10 days. Each cell protrudes through microvilli called taste hairs, and through taste pore, and into the oral cavity. Dissolved chemicals interact with these cell receptors, and different tastes bind to specific receptors. Salt and sour receptors are chemically gated ion channels that depolarize the cell. Sweet, bitter, and umami receptors are called gustusin, they are specialized G-protein coupled receptors. Both divisions of cell receptors release neurotransmitters to afferent fibers causing action potential firing. The absolute threshold for taste is the minimum needed to elicit a response from receptors in the mouth. Touch, feeling is recorded by sensory receptors on the skin and then travels to the central nervous system, it then integrates a decision of response to be made. If a possible response can be made, a signal is sent down to a muscle that acts appropriately according to the stimulus. Vision, light such as information or stimuli enters the retina, it then excites a neuron called photoreceptor cell. A local graded potential begins in the photoreceptor, it then excites the cell for an impulse to be passed along through a track of neurons to the central nervous system. A firm memory of smells. Memory and odor are linked due to their close physical proximity in the brain. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex stores most memories, and memories are retrieved using the prefrontal cortex, a region located near the olfactory processing center. 
these two right hemisphere centers are proximal to the amygdala hippocampal complex. The nearness of the centers for memory storage, odor processing, and memory recall explains the influence association between memories and smells. Other neutral memories such as autobiographical memories can be recalled frequently with great clarity and detail. The primitive forms of behavioral reactions to predatory odors are avoidance, fear, and stress. Blind sight is the ability of a blind person to sense accurately a light source or other visual stimulus even though unable to see it consciously. It is a demonstration of cognitive neuroscientists used to better explain sensory messages traveling through the primary visual cortex. The blind sight sensory messages move from the retina to the subcortical region of the brain, rather than traveling through the primary visual cortex. The superior colliculus is also located in the subcortical region, which processes eye movements and performs other vision-related functions. While relying on a subconscious visual pathway, blind sight kicks in when the visual cortex or other key areas involved in vision are damaged. The eyes and optic nerve remain intact and are said to still be capable of gathering and sending information to unaffected parts of the visual system. It is believed by cognitive neuroscientists that animals and humans can embed just about any smell. But many innately aversive and predatory odors you can train an animal to consider attractive. Context plays a role in smell-triggered memories, in which you identify and process these odors is usually insignificant because you don't notice those smells suddenly. In general, you link smells to experiences that count, and then savor those memories to survive. Emotional events tend to be of most vivid autobiographical memories. Over time protective behavior patterns are reinforced through death and life situations, that is genetically embedded in the amygdala. This memory retention is preserved through human evolution, for linking smells to threatening situations that could ruin survival. The flight response is the result of eons of learning how best to survive. And these findings suggest that you cannot learn to change your behavioral response to particular smells.